Stasis 23 here, and today's night therapy I have for you the Civivi Knives Banneret. This particular variation comes in at $93.50. It comes in in two other variations. You can also get it in a black wash blade with a black washed bolsters and a dark green canvas micarta scales. Or you can get it with a Damascus blade, a black washed bolster, and a twill carbon fiber scale. Now let's get some specs out of the way so you have an idea of the size of the knife. You have a total length of 7.9 inches, so it's a nice full-size knife. You have a blade length of 3.42 inches and a cutting edge of 3.4 inches. You have a grip area right behind that flipper tab to the back right here of 3.7 inches. You have a pretty slender handle scale thickness at 0.47 and a close width in the pocket also pretty narrow at 1 inch. You have a blade stock thickness of 0.117 and behind the edge thickness on my particular knife is around 20 thousandths, sharpened at 29 degrees per side. When I first saw this knife, I really liked the overall aesthetics of the knife. Uh, it kind of reminded me of this uh, Terrain 365 Otter Flip. It's got that same drop point, spear point looking blade with that swedge up top. Let's take a closer look at this. You have, like I said, nice drop point, or you could call it a spear point blade with a bead blast finish on a Nitro V stainless steel, which is an excellent budget steel when done right. It's uh, highly corrosion resistant, it's tough, and you can get a ridiculous, ridiculously sharp edge on it. Uh, you have a sharpening notch right here that does clear the plunge line and which is this line coming down right here. So it won't start to widen up until uh, after a few sharpenings or if you, you know, lay that edge back, it might start to widen up quick. But uh, if you leave the same factory edge bevel, it should have a few sharpenings before it widens up back there. You have a pretty robust stout tip there. So if you want to use it to, you know, bore a hole into some wood or something, you should be fine. You have medium traction jimping right there. I much prefer fine cut jimping, but this one does a decent job. It's not that far out, so if you have big hands and you come up here, you can overshoot it. So I think they should have, you know, brought it out a little bit further, kind of like Kaiser's been doing, and make that a little bit finer. It would grip onto the thumb a little bit better. I don't really care about jimping, but I know some people do. Uh, now this one comes with a full flat grind. Why don't we cut with it and see how well it performs. The knife came with a decent edge out of box. Not a lot of bite though. And I just really, really, really wish they would start to thin out their secondary bevels. This one's at 29 degrees per side. That is a very thick bevel. Uh, they have a nice full flat grind, so they would just bring that down to 17 to 20 degrees per side would be outstanding. I don't, I don't really understand that uh, thought process. And I mean, of course, a nice hollow grind would be even better. Now we start testing the Ergos and Pine 2x4. And there are, I didn't have any hot spots to speak of, but it has a little bit thinner of a handle, so I had to grip onto it a little bit tighter. So it would probably start to fatigue the, the forearms a little bit quicker over a longer period of time. Um, definitely, I love the blade shape. I just it's just not performing the way I wish it would. Here we're cutting up some of this. Uh, it's like I think a nylon strap. I doubled it up and it goes through this fairly fairly easily um, uh, the blade shape is excellent for it uh, I felt like I was able to get a good bit of power through that type of cut and on the cutting uh, flat cutting surface the the blade has enough belly to make this fairly easily uh, the edge once again is just not not cutting or performing the way I wish it would um, it, it feels like it's struggling a little bit and we haven't even got to the rope yet. The pinch grip was uh, fairly comfortable. Uh, I felt like I could control it pretty good, especially because of the uh, Peel Ply G10 that 
that my fingers are pretty much resting on. Um, it doesn't struggle too much through uh, the corner cardboard, but whenever I got to the uh, rubber tubing, it did. Uh, it it struggled to start the cut. Uh, once I started into it, it was a little bit easier, but you can see I'm having to put a lot more pressure into it. And a lot of times, I you know, whenever like once again, once that that edge bevel so obtuse, it just takes a little bit longer. Um, and once that that edge starts to dull out, it dulls out quick. Now this is some new denim that I bought this last go round. It's 12 ounce denim. I should have stayed with the 10 ounce. This stuff is it's like cutting uh, canvas up. It's compressed. It doesn't give at all. And it was definitely not the funnest stuff to cut. It manages to make it through it. Not sure how, but it gets through it. And uh, it, it edge is okay. It still has a little bit left. Once we get to this uh, half inch twisted sisa rope, it's definitely wanting to skate off the top of there. So whenever it's got a toothy edge to it, it'll grab onto the rope aggressively. I'm not getting that here. I'm having to push down a lot harder and it, it makes doing this test absolutely miserable i think i ended up making 20 cuts just because it was wearing out my hands and uh yeah i thought it performed okay Alrighty, I hope y'all enjoyed that cutting footage. I enjoyed making it for y'all. Now let's take a look at the action. Now this is where I think this knife is really shining for me. Um, it has an outstanding action. It's riding on ceramic ball bearings and a ceramic detent ball. And once you uh, release that, it's pretty much a free dropper. Just a mild shake there. Nice discreet flipper tab with some fine jimping there. Um, nice and comfortable with the light switch it comes rocketing out and uh, you can also put your finger up there build a little bit pressure and do the push button both of them work about the same and uh, they're both very satisfying very very snappy action uh, it feels like a high-end action if that makes any sense now let's close it up take a look at this uh, frame you have stainless steel bolsters that have been bead blasted like the blade once again i just it bead blast just feels cheap to me it looks cheap and uh it's much more prone to rusting just wish they would stop using that uh you have these speed holes in there with a nice chamfer going around them look nice and you have a uh, black peel ply g10 you have a chamfer going all the way around the edges so you don't have any sharp edges where you don't want them to be uh, and your scales do line up with the stainless steel frame. Your hardware is T8 on the pivot and on the body screws right here. You have the Civivi logo pivot. Um, everything is countersunk nicely. Your pocket clip is tip up left or right handed deep carry. Uh, let's check it out in the pocket. The pocket clip has good ramp to it. I found it went in and out of the pocket nicely. Um, it sits rather deep as well. You don't see any of that knife sticking up if that matters to you. That flipper tab, for the most part, stays out of the way. If you're going to reach your hand in there or put something else in there, it might. it's going to rub a little bit, but it's not terrible. Now, being that you have these speed holes on both sides and going through the stainless steel frame, it's lightened it up quite a bit. You also have you know open construction right here. Uh, let's check it out on the scale. First off, in grams... 115.6 grams and 4.07 ounces. You know, it's definitely not a featherweight, but I didn't have any trouble carrying it. All right, let's open it back up. Like I said, you have that flow through construction, two uh, standoffs in the back right here, a hidden lanyard post. Love that they didn't actually put an, an extra hole in this. You already got enough of them on the scales. Uh, you could blow this out with compressed air if you get any gunk in that pivot area and or wipe it out with a Q-tip. Let's check out the lockup here. 
it's sitting at around, I'd say 50%. Um, I can muscle a little bit of side to side flex and no up and down play whatsoever. The access to the lock bar is okay. Um, it's flush with that show side scale, but they give you a nice deep chamfer right there and on this side. So I can get my finger in there rather easy and it's pretty comfortable for me. Um, maybe if you have fat thumbs, it might be a little bit more difficult for you. But like I said, there's not a whole, there's not a ton of lock bar pressure there. It's, uh, I don't find it to be hard at all. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Rat Model 2. It's just in between both of these. You have more cutting edge than the Rat Model 1 though. Next up, we have the Civivi Conspirator and the Civivi Brazen. It's just a little shorter than these two. You have about the same cutting edge as the Brazen and more than the Conspirator. All right, now for my nitpicks and complaints. We talked about most of them. First off, the bead blast finish. I don't like it. I think it looks cheap and... Um, it is more prone to rusting. Also, this secondary edge bevel being at 20, 29 degrees per side, that is very obtuse. I'm gonna lay it back after the review, but um, I definitely wish it would come from factory at like 20 degrees at the most, 17 would be even better. Um, I would love to see some fine cut jimping there, maybe extend it a little bit more. I'm not the biggest fan of the stainless scales. However, I will say that uh, the overall look of this one definitely looks like a more premium knife you know looks like it'd be titanium or something like that um i think aluminum would have looked would have been better it would have been lighter than it is i'm just not the biggest fan of the stainless uh, uh the, in this case bolster lock all right final thoughts at $93, uh, it, this is just one. And now if you love it, it it's not it's not a, a bad made knife. Um, it's made very well. It's got beautiful action on it. It's fairly comfortable. Um, you could lay that edge bevel back and make it a lot more slicey than it is. Look at that drop shut action. Very nice and snappy action. I think it looks nice. I love the blade shape. But at $93, I have a lot of other knives that I would recommend over this. I mean, in their lineup, the Conspirator. I would definitely recommend the Conspirator and the Brazen over that. Uh, you know, as far as aesthetics, I like the aesthetics a little bit more than the Brazen. But the Brazen's a better slicer, um, a little bit more comfortable. And it doesn't have stainless handles and it's much cheaper this one i love the overall aesthetics it's comfortable slicey same blade steel button lock and it's cheaper than that so i just i don't know i'd love to hear y'all thoughts about these stainless steel frame locks and bolster locks stuff like that do y'all want the you know more high-end look by you know still getting the look of a higher-end knife but getting the stainless are y'all like me and rather, you know, make it all G10, make it all micarta and call it a day. Love to hear y'all thoughts. If you plan on picking this one up or you already have it, let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Double peace. Boom.